Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Today we come to the last line from the Lord's Prayer. Uh, the bit that begins, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, was not part of the prayer that Jesus taught, but rather a response of praise that we added sometime later. So we come to the last line, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, make me chaste, but not yet. That was how St Augustine prayed in his Confessions. Augustine was my kind of saint. He loved God, but he also knew how to live a bit. He was very human, and it took him a while to work out whether he really wanted to avoid temptation. And I confess that I feel a certain inner reluctance as I pray this line from the Lord's Prayer. I definitely resonate with Augustine's prayer. Lord, preserve me from gluttony, but not yet. Temptation is one of those things that we're taught to think of as bad, but which in some cases we do think is rather fun. <laughs> Pope Francis recently attracted a certain amount of attention by suggesting that this line was wrongly translated in any event because God doesn't tempt anyone. And there he put his finger on the complications of language and concept that make this line rather fiddly. The word temptation, as it appears here, translates a Greek verb peirazo, which could be translated as either tempt or test. And to make it even more complicated, that verb is interchangeable in Greek with another Greek verb dokimazo, which also appears in the New Testament, which means to prove. There are indeed some versions of the Lord's Prayer that translate this line as lead us not into the time of trial, referring to that idea of testing and proving. Our troubles with the Bible, in fact, often stem from the fact that both Greek and Hebrew in which the Bible was written carry double meanings that can get lost in translation and thereby become more, uh, far too one-dimensional when we translate them into English. So both of the ideas conveyed by the original Greek need to be held in view if we're to understand what we're asking God for in this prayer. Jesus, of course, was famously tempted by the devil in the wilderness. And Matthew describes the devil as the tempter, the one who leads us into sin. And in Luke chapter 22, verse 28, Jesus describes the whole of his ministry as one great long trial or temptation. He is tempted, for example, by the Pharisees who want to entangle him in his own words and by the devil who wants to bring him into his power and bring Jesus' power over to the dark side. Seen against Jesus' example, temptation is what leads us into a life of sin, which is to become entangled and snared. It is the road back to slavery in Egypt from which we cannot free ourselves. It is a path of thorns that looks enticing at the entrance, but when we are in it, we find there is no way back, and the more we struggle, the more it hurts, and the more trapped we become. This path imagery, evoked by Jesus' use of the phrase, lead us not into temptation, conjures up memory of the 23rd Psalm. He leads me in the paths of righteousness. He leads me by still waters and into green pastures. Jesus, with the good shepherd metaphor, metaphor always at the forefront of his own self-understanding, seems to have had that psalm constantly in view. It's the background music to the whole of the Gospel, and it's surely what we are meant to envisage as we pray this line. It is a prayer that God will shepherd us in his paths. It never contemplates that God would lead us in the path of temptation, but rather it uses a classic Jewish turn of phrase that sets up a clear distinction for us to see. Not this, but that. Lead us not down the broad path that leads to destruction, but rather pluck us from that path and lead us down your path instead, Lord. It reminds us that God is not like the bad shepherds who just leave us to wander down the broad path following our own stomachs, but is the good shepherd who leads us away from harm so that we need never fear any evil. And that brings in the second resonance we are meant to hear in this part of the prayer, the idea of testing or proving. It is to say, lead me not into judgment. Do not put me on trial on the basis of my sins or weaknesses or failings, for I am too easily tempted. But rather judge me by the fact that the shepherd has delivered me from evil. 
and now I belong to the Good Shepherd. It is, to, it is to say, as John Wesley put it, I am no longer my own, but yours. So guide me in your paths. Let me fear no evil. Count me among your flock. And of course, to be counted among God's flock is also, paradoxically, to be sent out to help bring in other lost sheep. And that brings me back to Augustine's prayer that I mentioned at the beginning. Because although it was a very honest and open acknowledgement of Augustine's own inner struggle and ambivalence about temptation, it also pointed to his realisation that the Christian faith was about more than just avoiding evil. Just shutting ourselves away in a sealed holy bubble is not going to make us truly godly. Somehow we have to go out into the world and engage with it like Jesus did, yet without sin. And perhaps on balance, Augustine thought, it is better to run the risk of sin in order to engage with the world in mission. You see, as soon as Jesus gathers us safely back into his flock, he sends us out again as sheep among wolves to run the risk of temptation and failure in order to bring others back into the flock. That is part of what we're praying for this week. And to reach out, God does not keep us locked away safe in the sheepfold, but rather leads us on a journey where we will encounter other paths that will appear tempting. We cannot engage with the world without encountering those paths. So to pray this line is to say, Lord, today I'm going out into the world again. I'm going to be tempted. I'm going to find that hard. I am not strong enough to do this in my own strength. I need you to help lead me, not in those paths, but in your path. So as I run that risk in order to serve you again today, let me not be afraid of evil, but lead me in your paths and deliver me from the other path so that we might all be brought back into your flock where there is rejoicing in heaven. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Good morning. Welcome to the Heart of Westmoreland Mission Community's morning prayer for Saturday. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and clothe us with power from on high. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Creator God, to you be praise and glory for ever. As your spirit moved over the waters, bringing light and life to your creation, pour out your spirit on us today, that we may walk as children of light and by your grace reveal your presence. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind in a moment of silent prayer. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you now and forever. Amen. Our psalm for Saturday is Psalm 42. Like as the heart desireth the water brooks, so longeth my soul after thee, O God. My soul is a thirst for God, yea, even for the living God. When shall I come to appear before the presence of God? My tears have been my meat day and night, while they say unto me, Where is now thy God? Now therefore think upon, I pour out my heart by myself, for I went with the multitude and brought them forth into the house of God, in the voice of praise and thanksgiving, among such as keep holy day. Why art thou so full of heaviness, O my soul? And why art thou so disquieted within me? Put thy trust in God, for I will still yet give him thanks 
for the help of his countenance. My God, my soul is vexed within me. Therefore will I remember thee concerning the land of Jordan and the little hill of Hermon. One deep calleth another, because of the noise of the water pipes. All thy waves and storms are gone over me. The Lord hath granted his loving kindness in the daytime, and in the night season did I sing of him, and made my prayer unto the God of my life. I will say unto the God of my strength, Why hast thou forgotten me? Why go I thus heavily, while the enemy oppresseth me? My bones are smitten asunder, as with a sword, while mine enemies that trouble me cast me in the teeth. Namely, while they say daily unto me, Where is now thy God? Why art thou so vexed, O my soul? And why art thou so disquieted within me? O put thy trust in God, for I will yet thank him, who is the help of my countenance and my God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The canticle is from Ezekiel 36. The Spirit of God fills the whole world. Alleluia. I will take you from the nations, and gather you from all the countries. I will sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean from all your uncleanness. A new heart I will give you, and put a new spirit within you, and I will remove from your body the heart of stone, and give you a heart of flesh. You shall be my people, and I will be your God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. The Spirit of God fills the whole world. Alleluia. Our two scripture readings from Saturday are from Micah and Ephesians. The first one, Micah 3, verses 1 to 8. And I said, Listen, you heads of Jacob and rulers of the house of Israel, should you not know justice, you who hate the good and love the evil, who tear the skin off my people and the flesh off their bones, who eat the flesh of my people, flay the skin off them, break their bones in pieces and chop them up like meat in a kettle, like flesh in a cauldron, then they will cry to the Lord, but he will not answer them. He will hide his face from them at that time, because they have acted wickedly. Thus says the Lord, concerning the prophets who lead my people astray, who cry peace when they have something to eat, but declare war against those who put nothing into their mouths. Therefore it shall be night to you without vision, and darkness to you without revelation. The sun shall go down upon the prophets, and the day shall be black over them. The seers shall be disgraced, and the diviners put to shame. They shall all cover their lips, for there is no answer from God. But as for me, I am filled with power, with the Spirit of the Lord, and with justice and might, to declare to Jacob his transgression and to Israel his sin. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> and the second lesson is Ephesians 6, verses 10 to 20. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armour of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against the enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, 
against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armour of God, so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day, and having done everything, to stand firm. Stand therefore, and fasten the belt of truth around your waist, and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly, as I must speak. Thanks be to God. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your people, and kindle in us the fire of your love. All who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God and fellow heirs with Christ. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your people. Renew the face of your creation, Lord, pouring on us the gifts of your Spirit, and kindle in us the fire of your love. For the creation waits with eager longing for the glorious liberty of the children of God. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your people, and kindle in us the fire of your love. The Gospel Canticle, the Benedictus. Christ has gone up on high and has led captivity captive. Alleluia. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who has come to his people to set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old, to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High. For you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. To shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Christ has gone up on high, and has led captivity captive. Alleluia. And now we have our prayers for Saturday, the Eve of Pentecost. The response to each short petition is, Father, send us your Spirit. Father, send us your Spirit. The Apostles waited and prayed for the coming of the Spirit. Gathered together in their company, we pray for his coming today and joyfully proclaim the greatness of God. Father, send us your spirit. In Christ, you restored the universe you made. Through your spirit, renew the face of the earth. 
Father, send us your Spirit. You breathed into Adam the breath of life. Breathe your Spirit into the Church, that the world may find life in her. Father, send us your Spirit. May your Spirit bring light to our darkness, turn hatred into love, sorrow into joy, and doubt into hope. Father, send us your Spirit. Cleanse and refresh us in the waters of the Spirit, where there is anguish and sin, bring healing and rebirth. Father, send us your Spirit. Through the Holy Spirit, you bring men and women and children to life and glory. May the dead enter their home in heaven to enjoy your love forever. And we especially remember our dear friend Adrian. Father, send us your Spirit. Almighty God, your ascended Son has sent us into the world to preach the good news of your kingdom. Inspire us with your Spirit and fill our hearts with, with your love, that all who hear your word may be drawn to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Being made one by the power of the Spirit, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May the Spirit kindle in us the fire of God's love. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.